you might call it the latest addition to what is quickly becoming a football metropolis. The glass palace rising up next to Autzen Stadium is most certainly symbolic. The symbol in this case, one of transformation. A program no longer content with just being good. A fan base no longer happy with just winning. An ascension in the college football world brought about by a philosophy, one embodied and carried out by the man in the visor. The irony in the construction of the newest state-of-the-art Nike-funded football facilities lies in the fact that Chip Kelly may never inhabit them. It would be akin to Babe Ruth never actually playing in the house that Ruth built. But at this point, there's a good chance Kelly won't ever step foot in the house that Chip built as the active head football coach. I don't know. He's, he's pretty, plays that close to the vest. I said earlier this season, whether or not he gets to a national championship, I don't know that that's a real factor. I think it's more probably a sense of timing. Only time will tell if Kelly does in fact leave for the allure of an NFL coaching job. If he does, the debate will officially begin. Just how do you evaluate a body of work only four years in the making? The one thing that you have to give Bellotti and Rich Brooks credit for, Chip Kelly never had to build. He never had to build up a program. He never had to go out and fight for recruits. Chip did take the next step in a style of football and, and made it more exciting and tougher to defend an offense. And, and, and he definitely did take it up a notch, there's no doubt. But sometimes I think Mike Bellotti didn't get enough credit for what he accomplished, and Chip kept it there and maybe pushed it up a little higher. Kelly is known for his penchant for doing things differently, and the route he took to land the offensive coordinator position certainly falls under that umbrella. He really wasn't on anyone's radar while holding down the same job for New Hampshire in 2006. It was an interesting story because the reality is he found us. Um, he had read on the website or saw that we were going to the spread zone option um, in the spring of 2005. And he called me and asked if he could come out and spend a week with us. And I said, sure. Gary left to go to LSU, and I interviewed seven people. And Chip was by far the most conversant in the offense, the guy that in my mind could take us to the next level. Once at Oregon, he began implementing the offensive tenants that would eventually become his MO. But as the Ducks wrapped up the 2008 season with a Holiday Bowl victory over Oklahoma State, there really wasn't any expectation of change. No signs at that point that Bellotti had any intentions of stepping down, but behind the scenes, change was looming. I had bad knees and practice was becoming difficult for me, more than difficult. Um, standing up for two and a half hours at a stretch was practically impossible. So um, I was gonna step down, become the AD, the conspiracy theories began. Bellotti was forced out. Nike founder Phil Knight was worried he'd lose Kelly and made the call to install him as head coach. There's a lot of uh, conjecture out there and it's all false. I want to set the record straight on this. Nobody, in fact, when I called Phil Knight, um, Pat Kilkenny, and Dave Frohmeyer and said, uh, I want to do this. One, I want to make Chip the successor. We did that before the year, and that was my idea. That was not anybody else's idea but mine. Phil Knight had nothing to do with it. Phil Knight, when I called him, said, are you sure? Do we really want to do this? And I said, yes, I, I do. And, um, and like I said, that was, that was the whole deal, and that's the honest to God truth. So now the offense was Kelly's, and he was free to step on the gas pedal as hard as he wanted. Expectations were high as the 2009 season began, Kelly's debut as head coach would have the entire college football world talking afterwards. Not because he lost, but because of the punch. And the Boise State players come out around LeGarrette Blunt. Somebody hit him on the top of the hat, and he responded, and now his teammates come and get him to separate him. He suspended LeGarrette Blunt for the season, which in the end may have been a blessing in disguise. Kelly rode freshman sensation LaMichael James into the Civil War with a shot to send Oregon back to the Rose Bowl for the first time in almost 20 years. It is happening! Oregon is going back to the Rose Bowl! On 
September 3rd, in Boise, Idaho, everybody in this country counted you guys out. They lost in Pasadena to Ohio State, which set up Kelly's biggest test yet. A perfect storm was looming. His first off season, more like a nightmare that unfolded one arrest after another. I don't know if they were challenging Chip and the new coaching change or what was going on. The Ducks star quarterback and running back both found themselves in trouble with the law. Kelly eventually kicking Jeremiah Masoli off the team, suspending LaMichael James for one game while handing out an assortment of punishments to several other players. The embattled coach was answering more questions about controlling his players than he was about his spread offense. When your quarterback and your best player get in trouble weeks apart, that's, that's where it was. That and a combination with social media, I thought that's what made it such a big deal. Kids make mistakes. And unfortunately nowadays uh, with social media, what might not have been a big thing 10 years ago is on national news because somebody sees it and takes it and all that. But in the sports world, winning has a way of overshadowing just about everything else. And the Ducks 2010 regular season proved to be the perfect remedy for all that ailed him. <music> Kelly led the team into that year's Civil War with the unthinkable on the line, a chance to play in the national championship. Can you the magical season this has become, and it's not over. And Oregon is gonna play in the national championship game. While Oregon came up short against Auburn, Kelly and the program were established. He was no flash in the pan. Last year, he led Oregon to its first Rose Bowl win since 1917. And now he is back in Arizona for the Fiesta Bowl. It's a truly special thing to be able to play in a BCS game. <laughs> But to understand his success, you have to better understand the man, which isn't easy to do. Chip does not like the limelight. He doesn't want to be in front of a camera. And he's very private in not only his private life, but even in his coaching lives. Kelly is the college equivalent of Bill Belichick. He is incredibly private and not particularly fond of talking to the media, which he's openly admitted and regularly proves during his daily press briefings. It's certainly the highlight of my day. I love when it's the first thing in the morning because it can't get any worse after this. So, you know, we may have the worst practice ever today, but I say, guys, you should have seen what I just went through, so. Anybody that covers Chip Kelly on a daily basis knows his personality and accepts it as who he is. What do you do to get him confidence early? <laughs> we'll go find out. <laughs> It's not something he turns on just to be mean. That's just who the guy is. He also isn't overly fond of other aspects of the job. A recent article pointing out that many boosters have complained that he regularly gives them the cold shoulder. Bilotti isn't surprised, being it was something he tried to shield Kelly from when he was athletic director. That was gonna be a job that I would help him with because as the AD, I ran a lot of interference for him in that regard. And I did a lot of the public speaking. He did the football and that was our, that was our deal. When he told me, he said, Mike, I'm not gonna be a coach like you. Uh, I, I don't wanna do some of those other things. The article to me suggested that there were some boosters that got a dash of reality. And that was, if you're not Phil Knight, you're not Pat Kilkenny, well, then you don't really need to be glad-handed. You might then believe Kelly is one of those coaches who's loyal to his inside circle, creating an us-against-the-world mentality. But that may not be totally accurate either. Several of his former players have told us he's not particularly liked by many on the team, and that he even favors offensive players over defensive ones. This, however, may come with the territory. Players that play tend to like you, and players that don't play tend to not like you. And players that don't play tend to blame you for the fact that they're not playing. No matter what the case may be, he does appear to be a football-holic. He's not married, has no kids. One of his closer friends is John Gruden, who was famous for spending long hours in the office, getting very little sleep. Like Gruden, football appears to be Kelly's life. I think Chip does live football 24 hours a day. I think Chip Kelly is that guy, I do. I, I think he's a guy that will sit in the office and watch just hours and hours of film to get one play. He's a football junkie. He is fairly narrow-minded and straight. I mean, like his vision is not uh, real wide, but it's very specific to his task at hand. The result of Kelly's football addiction is what has now become known as the Blur Offense. It's a two-minute huddle on steroids that takes place all game long. 
His players are conditioned from the get-go. They practice fast, every day, all the time. Well, they were flying. We got 40 snaps in the first 12-minute period and 40 snaps in our second 12-minute period, so they're moving around pretty good. In the end, his philosophy is based on common sense. The notion that fast players running plays quickly gives the defense barely enough time to line up. They can't substitute, they can't regroup, but many successful college game plans have been tried at the NFL level and failed, which begs the question, would Kelly's work? Some of it would work, some of it wouldn't. I think he's very aware of that. I think Chip is an intelligent coach. He'll know what to do. He'll use elements of it that will, will transfer and, and make the grade. He'll dispense with others that won't. So will his players on defense buy in to a fast-paced offense? The only way Chip Kelly is going to stay successful, in my opinion, the NFL, is if he runs an NFL offense at his fast pace. Will an NFL defensive end who's getting paid $9 million a year to rush the quarterback be willing to play those extra 15 snaps a game? The Washington Redskins are doing a pretty good job with, I forgot the name of their quarterback, but I think he's done a decent job and, and the kid at Carolina has done a pretty good job. For now, Kelly finds himself back in the desert, back at the stadium where perfection eluded him just two years before. Does he have anything left to prove? Is being one of the best enough, or will he return unsatisfied until he is the best? Back home, the work goes on either way, awaiting his decision, awaiting to see if the man in the visor will in fact call this unfinished kingdom home for one more year.